Those who wish to observe the role of philosophy in human existence may see it dramatized on a grand and gruesome scale in the conflict splitting the Catholic Church today. Observe in that conflict men's fear of identifying or challenging philosophical fundamentals. Both sides are willing to fight in silent confusion to stake their beliefs, their careers, their reputations on the outcome of a battle over the effects of an unnamed cause. One side is composed predominantly of men who dare not name the cause, the other of men who dare not discover it. Both sides claim to be puzzled and disappointed by what they regard as a contradiction in the two recent encyclicals of Pope Paul VI. The so-called conservatives, speaking in religious, not political terms, were dismayed by the encyclical Populorum Progressio on the development of peoples, which advocated global statism, while the so-called liberals hailed it as a progressive document. Now the conservatives are hailing the encyclical Humanae Vitae of human life, which forbids the use of contraceptives, while the liberals are dismayed by it. Both sides seem to find the two documents inconsistent, but the inconsistency is theirs, not the pontiffs. The two encyclicals are strictly, flawlessly consistent in respect to their basic philosophy and ultimate goal. Both come from the same view of man's nature and are aimed at establishing the same conditions for his life on earth. The first of these two encyclicals forbade ambition. The second forbids enjoyment. The first enslaved men to the physical needs of others. The second enslaves him to the physical capacities of his own body. The first damned achievement, the second damns love. The doctrine that man's sexual capacity belongs to the lower or animal part of his nature has had a long history in the Catholic Church. It is the necessary consequence of the doctrine that man is not an integrated entity, but a being torn apart by two opposite, antagonistic, irreconcilable elements, his body, which is of this earth, and his soul, which is of another supernatural realm. According to that doctrine, man's sexual capacity, regardless of how it is exercised or motivated, not merely its abuses, not unfastidious indulgence or promiscuity, but the capacity as such is sinful or depraved. For centuries, the dominant teaching of the Church held that sexuality is evil, that only the need to avoid the extinction of the human species grants sex the status of a necessary evil, and therefore, only procreation can redeem or excuse it. In modern times, many Catholic writers have denied that such is the Church's view. But what is its view? They did not answer. Let us see if we can find the answer in the encyclical Humanae Vitae. Dealing with the subject of birth control, the encyclical prohibits all forms of contraception except the so-called rhythm method. The prohibition is total, rigid, unequivocal. It is enunciated as a moral absolute. Bear in mind what this subject entails. Try to hold an image of horror spread across space and time, across the entire globe and through all the centuries. The image of parents chained like beasts of burden to the physical needs of a growing brood of children, young parents aging prematurely while fighting a losing battle against starvation, the skeletal hordes of unwanted children born without a chance to live, the unwed mothers slaughtered in the unsanitary dens of incompetent abortionists, the silent terror hanging for every couple over every moment of love. If one holds this image while hearing that this nightmare is not to be stopped, the first question one will ask is, why? In the name of humanity, one will assume that some inconceivable but crucially important reason 
must motivate any human being who would seek to let that carnage go on uncontested. So the first thing one will look for in the encyclical is that reason, an answer to that why.